How you going? I'm, I'm, I'm glad to speak to you, man. I'm really, really looking forward to the tour, but more so, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've dug your band for a long time, and I just, I love the whole journey of of what's been going on. I think it's, it's I think it's really incredible. Oh, thank you. Appreciate. It. I mean, it's like, yeah, and I love, I love how the, um, I know you've had a, you know, quite a few interviews today, but. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say the umbilical is like a left turn because I know the sort of stuff that, you know, where you've started and what you're into and also your kind of DIY, DIY punk background. But um, what a what a sledgehammer to a, to the face album. Like, it's just, um, yeah, even I was surprised as a huge fan. Well, I mean, we, we always, you know, like, we're not, we're not, we're not like metal dudes, but we're, we like all come from hardcore and punk and stuff. And I think a thing for us was always sort of hating on bands. We like sort of softening as they got older. So we've tried to like push it in the other direction. We're trying to make every record heavier, harder to listen to. That, yeah. Cause that's what, that, yeah. I mean, cause that's what, yeah, that's what, a, that's what a few bands do. Don't they, you know, like to, to good and bad effect as it goes along. And then it's like, yeah. Um, so you, you know, there's sort of, the songs are definitely a bit more kind of visceral now and not kind of, you know, I think it's like the, the, the catalog is really good. Like I love it, you know, Haven and Magus so much, but it's like, then it was like, Oh fuck, we're going back to this. Like it's good. It's, you gotta keep people. You people are gonna be kept on their toes anyway, don't they? I mean, dude. Like I said, I, I come from punk, so like I, I, not that I like starting shit, but uh, you know, I, I like stirring the pot a little bit. <laughs> that's that. That's good, man. I'm 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 all about that. I've 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 you know I've I've played in squat shows and shitty bands and stuff, and it's all. And I think that's it's 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 part of st you know stirring that shit up is 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 what's good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and for us too, like a big part of it is just, um, you know, keeping ourselves engaged. I mean, we we we're constantly mixing stuff up because, like, we have such short attention spans. Like, it's just if we're not having fun, I think it comes across. You know, there's not there's there's not much worse, is there, than seeing a band when they, you know, like two songs in, they look so so fucking disinterested, and you just like. Who you know? I haven't I haven't come to see the I don't know the fucking the Eagles reunion tour or something. You know, like it's just like well, you know, yeah. Like right. it, and and vice versa with the crowd as well. Like the crowd, you know, the crowd interaction as well equally plays a part. Yeah, I mean, well, well, I've been whining for years about how boring our audience is. So I'm hoping this at least gives a few people some fodder for moving around, having a little bit of fun when we play. But we'll we'll see. Uh, I'm sure you'll, yeah. I'm sure you'll, you, 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 you definitely get that in Australia because you haven't, you haven't been out to Australia. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure. Nah, uh, we we've tried a bunch. We tried. We were supposed to play uh, Bark Mofo before yeah. COVID, and then uh, we got an offer to do it during COVID, which we wanted to, and then uh, we had a tour booked a yes. few months back, and we we had this fan out some stuff, and we had to scrap it, but. Um, yeah, this is like one of our bucket list things. And like me, I'm like a poor person, so I I I would never be able to come over if it wasn't with the band, you know, Footman Bill. Yeah, yeah. It'll it'll yeah. And I mean it's yeah, I think I think with um you must it must be kind of also kind of reassuring too to also come out with um Full of Hell as well, who, you know, they they definitely sing your praises. I I interviewed Dylan the week back or whatever and you know, it, it sounded like, you know, because you guys have played heaps together and you know each other, you know what I mean? So that's reassuring, yeah, I mean, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we've known those dudes since they started started that band, basically. Um, but, yeah, they're awesome. They're, they're like, super good pals. We, we did that tour uh, a couple years back over here with, with them and Converge and Uniform and uh, us and Full Hell and Uniform, but especially us and Full Hell are, like, cutting up and, you know, we were like cut from the same cloth. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, Uniform are another amazing band and and great great humans as well. You know, like that's oh yeah that that definitely makes the you know the difference. Um, so um, I was going to say, so um, I I I read in some interview or like a video thing you were saying that the album is almost you're almost dissing yourself. I want to I want to kind of flush that out. I'd, I'd, I'd like... <laughs> yeah, I could. Do you regret that comment, or I love I love the look on your face, even when I'm asking you that. <laughs> well, well, you know, it's like when we started working on the record, we started talking about it years and years ago. I don't know. We wanted to do we wanted to do a record that like sort of clearly stated our points of view about politics or social politics or whatever. We just had too many boneheads coming around. You know, we were trying to like discourage that a little bit, but um, I don't know. When we started doing it, it's like, I, I don't know. Like I'm a flawed person. We're all flawed people in the band. We're not perfect. I, I don't like to proselyte. I am vegan straight edge, but I don't like to proselytize, you know, like <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up Catholic or whatever, but uh, I don't know. So it's like, it's much easier for me to sort of like, um, you know, in terms of like writing the lyrics and like crafting something that's like not super hokey and corny, it's easier to sort of like dissect the thing and pull out all the stuff I hate about it. And, and you know, inevitably, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to like turn it on us as a band or, or me specifically as a person. And you know, I say that I say it's like a vow this record, but it's really like this on myself sort of uh you know like my own I, I you know i try not to point the finger at the other dudes too much but uh yeah i don't know i mean it's like it's like expressing all the things that i want the band to be by discussing all the thing, all, all the ways we fail at that thing you know yeah i don't know so is it is it is it kind of did, so is it kind of without in definitely not in a wanky way? It's not a um, a reflective or introspective record, is it, or is it? Is it kind of because it kind of almost sounds like a um, your younger self almost kind of. Well, this is my yeah, interpretation. I mean, like a, a, yeah, a, a your younger self the, talking to your current self. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's the frame, I mean that's the framework of the thing is like I, I tried to I tried to look at it through the lens of like. You know, because I, I I I come from like punk and hardcore and DIY culture and stuff. So like, like and, and like militantly ideological in my younger days. So like, I really wanted to like look at the thing from the perspective of my younger self that hadn't had to compromise to like pay my bills or uh, help somebody out that was like sick or dying or you know like all the things that you have to do you know, or that you have to do, but you, that you do as you get older and everybody around you gets older and, you know, um, I don't know that there's necessarily, other other than the sort of like social inadequacies of myself and the band stuff, like in terms of like how we've handled the band, I don't know if there's like a lot of that stuff I would change. I mean, like we came under fire for like, Years ago, when we did Scion Fest, you know, we did that. We did that shit to go get a check so we could turn around and give that to our friends from the UK, so they could fly over here and do a tour. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't regret that. Fuck it. Like, whatever. Like, we took that money so we could help out our friends. Like, that's to me, whatever. And I would probably continue to make compromises like that, but um, you know, there's other things with how we've treated people how I treated people, how we treat each other in the band, where, like, those are things that you constantly sort of struggle with. So, like, you know, in that context, like, it is, a, I mean, anything we, anything I write in terms of, like, the critique or whatever is going to be, like, somewhat introspective. Yeah. And, and even stuff where, like, um, it's, like, a blatant critique of, oh, I hate the cops or I hate this thing or that thing. Like, there's always going to be an element in how I write it that, is going to point to like my own hypocrisies or inadequacies in, in a situation. Like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I, like I, it's, it's insane to me that people write from these sort of like more platitudes because I don't think that most people 
in the world are going to pass a sort of purity test like what I'm doing. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe that's just my high standard, my sort of standards for things or whatever. But like, I know that I fail all the time on all kinds of levels, you know, and you try to get better or whatever to be better, but you know, people are human. So like, they're going to fuck up. You know, I continue to fuck up. I expect everybody to continue to fuck up. But like the idea is that you're going to try to be better, try to fix those things. So yeah, I don't know. Oh, sorry. It was a little random. No, no, I like it. That's good. I mean, I think because the, yeah, the, I mean, I think that's just, yeah, that's definitely self-evident because that foundation is there about, you know, you have that, those core kind of beliefs from growing up in the community, but yeah, you, you know, that's every, every kind of little music scene has their own kind of politics of, you know, when this person and that and this action and, you know, like it's, they're not, if they're not kind of, there's some kind of gross things that are really, you know, like racism, sexism and that, that are just blatant, like, fuck you. But then the other stuff, it's just, it's a bit blurry and it's like, you know, like you said, we all, you know, no one's kind of perfect. So it's a, um, you can't help but write kind of interesting. I mean, stuff. I mean, look, I, I'm from Louisiana, even that shit, like there's people in my family, you know, or people that I've come into contact with that like are fucked up people. You know what I mean? That like, if it wasn't a person that I cared about for this reason or that person, yeah, fuck them, like whatever. But I mean, I, I'm a hypocrite when it comes to that stuff. Like there are people in my life that I would say, yes, this person is fucked up and I don't want to bring them around certain other people. Yeah. But that doesn't, that still doesn't mean I'm going to like totally cut everybody out of my life. I mean, dude, this is like real life. It's not Twitter. Like it's yeah. the, the <laughs> people. The fuck up. And, and, and the other part of it is like, you know, I don't know. I I I come from an upbringing where, like, you, you the point is that you lead by example. So, like, if I want people to change to make those changes in my life, like, I have to. Some people, the people I have the energy for, you know, that I'm going to take the time for, whoever that is, my mom, my dad, whatever. Like, I need to be in their life to some extent to like have some some kind of influence. You know, somebody somebody good needs to be in those fucked up people's lives to have some kind of influence. You can't just, I mean, I don't, I say that, but there's people I would fucking throw in the trash in two seconds. So I don't know. <laughs> it's tricky. <laughs> like, I said, like I said, like I said, there's no moral, like I, it's hard for me to like, just sort of cite these like moral imperatives where yeah, like yeah. just say, this is the way to this. Here's how you do it. Here's how you fix the problem. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm some ding dong from the suburbs of New Orleans. I don't, I don't know how to fix all the problems. Ah, uh, look, we all, yeah, yeah, we all, you know, I mean, we, I think all when we, you know, like pre twenty and stuff, we, you know, we're so idealistic and stuff when we listen to those, you know, anarcho records and stuff. It's just, you know, like it's, I think it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a good foundation, but it's, it doesn't, all of that stuff doesn't cross over into real life, does it? You know, unfortunately. I mean, it can and it can't, and there's a gray area and whatever, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work, and. Like, you know, and, and that was the whole point of the, the thing with the record is that I wanted to like, I wanted the critique to be as harsh as I could make it. And that judgmental, self-righteous 22 year old version of myself was the person to like put that critique out there the same way. And the same way I'm like sort of thankful for like maximum rock and roll when they were like putting us on the boycott list and doing shit with something like, yeah, great. Put us on the list. Like. You should. I'm glad there's people out there that like are going to have a, a sort of like extreme viewpoint because I can get something out of that extreme viewpoint. I might not always agree with it and it might not always be like applicable to my life or every situation, but there's something I can take out. Of it. There's something I can learn from. So it was I appreciate it. On, on that point, like, yeah, I think I think the maximum rock and roll days were incredible. Like I think because not only could you discover a lot of things, but like the kind of political social discourse from the columns in there, and definitely we know from like Tim and stuff, you know, some of the some of the some of the opinions were so black and white and bands were ostracized and everything. But, you know, the kind of the knowledge gained from that was just, you know, pretty unbelievable now. Like I think to yeah, that was a amazing really and making contact with bands all over the world as well uh, and, and look and it goes back to what i was saying too about like heavy bands sort of like petering out and becoming not heavy bands like 
like I'm bummed when I see people who have who had really extreme political or social views that I sort of agreed with water that down in old age. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm bummed when I see it get kind of, I don't want that. I want them to be this sort of thing, not a person, but like an ideal thing that I can like grasp on as a touchstone. And when it when there's people sort of like weaken those things, it's a bummer, you know what I mean? So I don't know. There there's a there is a sort of struggle in myself also to like find some kind of balance, but also not uh compromise where it matters. Yeah. No, it's true. I I, you know, whether you like or like many people disagree or whatever, I mean I Ian Mackay, I think, is one of those people you 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 listen to him and he's still um he's still like, you know. The, the basic guy, the DIY stuff, it's just like nothing's changed. He's still doing bands where it's like, you know, DIY spaces and just like, nah, I'm not, you know, I'm not stepping into that limelight, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah. But it's also easy to be in Makai because she yeah. was in the minor, you know what I mean? After minor threat, like, you know, if I was in minor threat and everything, you know, I could just do whatever yeah. the fuck I wanted. Like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's so a like, big, it's a big start. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. And I love him. I love all his bands and stuff, but like, you know, that dude has some privilege from when he was a teenager that like, yeah, the rest of us idiots don't, didn't have that. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big uh, early, you know, like I think his second or third band that he was ever in that just, uh, you know, like just, you know, um, it's yeah. But yeah, you know, I mean, I, I look more to like these bands that are uh, outspoken in their politics. Uh, Race Trader would be a band that comes to yeah, mind. It's like yeah. super outspoken in their politics, very extreme, and they fucking live that shit. All the all their all their jobs and stuff reflect their politics. So like, those are some dudes to me like who are you know sort of they got skin in the game and putting their money where their mouth is. Like that's that's the kind of shit I think is. Yeah, uh, true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So people were, I think there are people out there. I mean, not that those are perfect or whatever, but like you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's 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 very and um even with your own home area, do you more you you know, because I know you've um which which I actually love, you made some kind of anti Pantera comments, which I which I love because I, I can't fucking stand that band and kind of a lot what they stand for, but it's kind of like you know your your area is known for certain things, but as opposed to the DIY space and kind of the underground, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that's just the stuff that was like popularized down there. There's, there's always been a strong DIY. Space. I mean, New Orleans is weird. Like everybody else in Dallas from Baton, well, other than Tyler, but the majority of Dallas from Baton Rouge, which is like two hours from here, hour and a half, two hours from here. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's like close enough to New Orleans, but like. New Orleans is like the the punk culture specifically is so enmeshed in like the transient culture because there's so much like um, like traveler type people gutter play called them gutter punks when I was a kid I don't yeah. know what it is. Google's I don't know what it is now but like you know like that that stuff was so predominant in like energizes the local scene but also like is so temporary that it's like not a thing that you can sort of like sustain um but i don't know new world to me is like every other place is you know it's ups and downs with the space there's always spaces there's always people that are into like diy stuff uh you know there's a bunch of spots right now P people you know i hear these people come from out of town the circling shows and stuff complain about having trouble finding spaces are all over the spaces it's always places you get all you yeah, gotta put in yeah. a, little, a little bit of elbow grease but there's always places for that stuff i did i did punk shows for 20 years it was like not not that it was easy or i did a great job or anything but all of my shows were always all, all ages so like if i did it for that long and the amount of shows i was doing like somebody smarter than me that's like you know a little bit more charismatic or whatever um a little nicer could definitely find some cool spots to do stuff like that. so i mean we hard. yeah we, we even have the same yeah, that got a blow off top but, but band wise too there's a bunch of good bands and stuff right at least right now i right now i feel like new orleans is in a sort of like 
renaissance period with like the DIY stuff. There's there's this band Slow Hole that's incredible. Yeah. There's this band uh Paprika that uh Jensen and Iron Lung put out uh their record. They're fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, there, there's a there's a bunch of cool stuff. And then and then like in the experimental sort of scene, there's a noise and experimental stuff. Like there's Silver Godling, MJ Guider, this band Belong that's like people don't even realize they're from here, but they're like an incredible sort of noise drone dream pop whatever oh band. wow a bunch of cool shit yeah yeah they still it's it's yeah because it's really funny like even i i come from melbourne so we, we, we you know we're quite a big music hub in our kind of country and then a lot of venues got closed down because of um indemnity insurance cost of living rah 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 but like what you were touching on people have shows under bridges with generators house shows fucking um it bowling clubs and all, all 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 sorts of stuff you know that yeah that stuff has always gone on you know like that's what people forget it's like no the shows are always going to go on there's going to be there's always a way you know like that's well you know and, and part of it is like i think is like the way the current culture is where like people sort of want things handed to them very easily they want to just they want to just be able to see it on instagram or social media whatever shit like yeah is and you know sometimes you gotta like work for it a little like i'm from the suburbs of new Orleans. i'm from not close to here so like as soon as i got a car i was driving all over places going out to play i shouldn't have been going when i was 15 16 but like if you want to go to shows and find cool stuff that that's how you got to be you got to go looking for stuff now it's crazy because like every other person in the world has tattoos and funny hair it looks like a punk like when I was coming up, dude, you saw somebody with a goofball T-shirt on, you'd have to run up to them and give them flyers or get flyers from them and figure out who they are and blah, blah, blah. Now there's all kinds of people into all kinds of crazy stuff, which it I is, think yeah. is awesome. But, like, you know, not everybody wants to put the work in. But but going back to yeah. talking about DIY spaces, like right now in New Orleans, the, like the go-to DIY spot is a uh, – it's like, I don't know if y'all have these, like a dollar store or used to be like a dollar store. It's like a oh, shitty, yeah, yeah. Uh, like almost like a gro like a grocery convenience store or whatever. But it's like, it's getting turned into something else. But before it gets turned into something else, some people basically lease that out and have all those punk shows there. It's awesome. Oh, wow. Great. Cool. Are you, are you, I mean, you're a busy person. Do you still have any, do you run any shows or have anything to do that? Or is that you, you got enough on your uh, plate? <laughs> COVID, COVID, lockdown, COVID was like my uh, escape, my my moment to to get out of doing anything anymore. Yeah, and, and now, now you know, it's like a few years later, people forgot. Nobody even remembers that I did shows. I did shows for like twenty years. Nobody even remembers I did shows. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So you're and right. I, I I do the record shop, and like people just think I'm the record. People barely even know I'm a dolly. They just think I'm the record shop guy. It's awesome. I've read. <laughs> I've read yeah, I'm nice. I'm nice now. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> how 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 is the record shop going? Is that going pretty well post post COVID? Is it going okay or? Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. I mean, it's it's easy because I don't barely take any money off of it. I'm just super broke all the time. I just toss all the money back in the shop. But uh, so like, yeah, I mean, it's fine. You yeah, pay yeah. the rent. Yeah, it's a little slow right now because it's summertime. But uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. Oh, that's good. Um, so what going back to the album, what 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 is the most personal or kind of vulnerable song on the album for you? Uh, if there, if there is because there is a yeah, there's a few that are, are pretty are pretty raw as well. I know we've kind of spoken about the themes of the album, but yeah, some of the songs are really, you know. Uh yeah, I don't know. Um I mean they're all kind of like deeply personal and uh but you know it's not like uh you know like like i'm not on the, the acoustic record we did inconsolable i'm not i'm not technically on that record but i i wrote all the lyrics to that record and, and that record's like in terms of like emotionally personal or whatever is like that's emotionally personal to me what i was sort of writing those songs about this record on the other hand is like i mean it's personal i am talking about myself in most yeah. cases uh but it's not something i'm like sensitive 
it's not things I'm sensitive about or insecure or like wouldn't just talk to a stranger about, oh, I'm, I'm feeling conflicted about taking this money from this thing or going to yeah, do yeah. this thing, playing this show that's like at a well, at a club or whatever. Like, you know, it's like stuff like they're like, you know, I've had a, you know, I've, I've lost my temper and I fucking chewed out, you know, Andy, Andy and thou, like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like it's like not yeah, stuff yeah. that like I'm not necessarily shy about. So I don't know if I would say it's like um, you know, salacious or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, yeah, because I think we yeah we kind of got over how kind of raw it is. Um, do you between do you what I want to ask about the art? Do you have much to do with the artwork? Who does the artwork? Because the artwork across yeah. the whole albums has been very consistent like different but it's thematically you know so you do uh, yeah i'm the artwork i'm the artwork gosh oh, cool. i mean i'm not i'm not drawing it yeah yeah um, i'm the one coordinating it or stealing it from various places or yeah, whatever yeah. but um yeah I, I i'm i'm that person i'm i'm happy that you think it's consistent like that's one of i mean in terms of like the uh my critique of the band artistically like that's probably like a, a, or my input on the end of the band like that's like one of the things at the top of the list like i don't find it i feel like it's all over the place and like part of that is you know when i joined the band i didn't think it was gonna last this long i thought it'd be like any other band i was in two three years at best so like i didn't have a long-term vision for the thing i just was kind of yeah. shooting from the head with everything we did so um you know and a lot of it too is like i approached it i approached it like a, a metal band i had all this stuff i had all this like images from like show flyers and stuff that i just been sort of like stashing away that's be great for a metal band blah 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 so like i sort of approached it like that and then got bored with that very quickly and so that's when i sort of started shifting it into like areas that were more the stuff I like, um, you know, and less metal. And I, and yeah. I think, and I think it's probably one, like the stuff, I mean, in terms of us sort of standing out from a lot of other bands, I think that's, you know, musically and, you know, aesthetically, well, that's why, probably. Why do you like that particular artwork? What, what's the appeal to you? Like, I mean, I like all kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. you know, like, the Art Nouveau stuff, the pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood stuff, the woodcuts, and yeah, I'm all yeah. Like, you know, I'm I'm probably drawn a lot to like the black and white stuff because it's the kind of shit you could easily grab from something and Xerox and you know put on a show poster or something. Or like you can edit it very easy. You know, or me, I don't really barely not use computers, so like, you know, it's something I could edit with like a sharpie and scissors and a glue stick and white out and whatever. You know, like I can do that. Um, you know, I mean, that's how when, when my old friend Dan Fox kind of showed me how to like use the Xerox machine and use the invert button and cut stuff out and type everything up, all the text out on a typewriter. You know, I yeah. got a typewriter yeah, I use for all the text. Like, um, you know, I just stuck with that. And I like the aesthetic of that was me basically applying what I would do at Kinko's to like get somebody else to basically do that on the computer when it's like something I, it's like out of my wheelhouse a little bit. But, yeah. You, uh, I mean, part, part, part of it to me is like, I, I'm, we're all into a lot of stuff and a lot of different things. And, but we play all these shows with like metal band stuff that like sort of do, they approach it the exact same way. I put your, put your logo here and it's gotta be black and it's gotta, you know, maybe we'll put a wolf on it or we'll put a big sword on it or a dragon or something, you know what I mean? Or some skulls or whatever. And like, not that I don't like that stuff. I do. And I mean, maybe we have that shit on dial stuff. So like, clearly I like that, but you get bored. I mean, I don't know. We just, we get bored with that stuff. And you play with those bands, you see that shit all the time. It's like, this is like, doesn't anybody want to do something else with it? I mean, there's other things you can do with, within the scope of the genre and still be, metal or whatever it's pretty know. it because it's pretty limited kind of uh creatively you know like just to the fucking skulls and all that and, you know we all 
like that stuff. And um, I laughed before because you took me back about the the sharpies and cutting around and the and the the typewriter and that because that's how you know I designing flyers and I'm I am not an artist. I can draw a fucking stick figure and that's about it. But I would cut shit out and glue it on and then go to the cheap photocopy place and stuff. But you know, um, applying that approach over, but you know, even if you don't have that huge skill to create it yourself, you you know, the concepts you can come up, you can come up with some, you know, brilliant stuff, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. Tried try and true methods. I mean, I, I I approach it the way like, I don't know, like a rapper does, you know, a rapper's pulling shit from all over the place and like fit, putting in something and like putting a twist on it and making it into something else. But there's a reference to this thing. But it's also, so there's all these different levels to it. That's how I approach like the lyrics. That's how I approach the artwork. Uh, you know, if I was trying to intellectualize it, I would talk about like French detournment or whatever, like the, like that kind of, I would say, you know, or whatever. But like, you know, it's basically just like crime think young punk culture of just like swiping stuff and using the resources available and your skill level and just sort of like making it work and, and still being able to articulate a thought or a feeling with what you have. That's it. Yeah, no, that's, I, I think you got to use, it's, it doesn't go wrong that way. I think it's, yeah. And I think it's good. I think it's probably being judgmental. I think it's more authentic anyway. That's what I would say, for, you know, <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, right. Um, now I was going to, so what's, what's, what's coming up next after the, obviously you've got um, the Australian tour and are you, are you doing Asia and Japan as well? No, I think, I think for here. hell is. Yeah, I think yeah. Hell is in like Southeast Asia. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We were going to do, when we had the other Australian thing set up, we were yeah, going to yeah, do Japan. Right. Yeah, we're going to do Japan with Full Hell for it. And then they canceled Japan. And then we had to cancel Australia. And then when the, when it came up, but we, we had, since we had already been talking about doing something together, when it came up, it was like, oh, let's just do Australia and New Zealand together. Um, yeah, so that, and then uh, we have a West Coast tour in the U.S. in October. Uh, we're kind of limited because uh, one of the main dudes had, had a real job, and he only wanted to take off, like, vacation time to tour. So he had a very limited scope. He just got laid off. So now we have a little bit Fuck. more. But but in between that, uh, Tyler, our drummer, um, joined that band Snooper. It's like a... a like punk garage rock band uh and they tour like 11 and a half months out of the year or wow. something uh you know whatever i mean not that much but like they tour a lot so um his schedule is kind of full but um i'm hoping that um next year we'll do a little bit more we we never we never like we don't tour a ton i mean we all we've all always had other shit in our lives going on so um but I would like to do if it was up to me, we would do things sort of like quarterly, like we do like a tour every three months, and then that fourth quarter or whatever would be like the recording, you know, a big recording of yeah. something. Um, that's how I would if I was like being a maniac about our schedule. That's how I would sort of parcel it out. But uh, I don't know. We'll see. We're we're kind of we got some offers to do European stuff that we might do next year, but. Um, Europe's like super expensive to tour through right now. Uh, like we we did a thing with Portrayal of Guilt um, last year, year before I can't remember, but um, it was, we lost a lot of money. Oh wow! It was actually, a real it was a really good tour, but like all the expenses just had like quadrupled since the last time we had been over there pre COVID. So like um, we ended up losing a lot of money. So. So if we go over again, we're basically gonna uh, we're gonna expect to lose money, but we're yeah. gonna focus on uh, we're just gonna focus on going to places, either places we haven't been to before that we really want to just go to and have fun, or places that we know we really like, yeah, the UK, whatever, where we know we're gonna have a, we have a bunch of friends and we're gonna have fun. So like, we're just not gonna we'll just, yeah we'll just take the hit and go have fun if we can. And and then we probably need to do like another US tour. We want to go to Japan. I've, I've been trying to talk. Uh, I'm old pals with uh, Page Ninety Nine, and they were they were talking about 
Mike was talking about going to Japan. I was like, oh, take us. Please take us. <laughs> we want to go to Japan. Please. So may, maybe that if they'll, if they'll take. But I was just talking shit about them in another interview. So if he, <laughs> if he, if he hears that, he might, he might give me some grief. But it's 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 one of it's one of the hit lists. I mean, you've um, about playing Japan because you've done the other one, which I wanted to touch on a few years ago about uh, road burn. How how is that? I mean, that's I I, I haven't Love been. And that's that's my dream to go to that because it's just fucking the curation and the the quality of bands and and what I hear about the interactions. It's so it's so fucking real. That's it, is that true? It's awesome. I mean, I don't know. I'm saying that from a perspective of somebody that's just, I, I didn't go there to like hang. I mean, I was hanging, but like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we went there to play every time. But um, even the first years we went when like we were just playing this or that thing, like, yeah, it's awesome. It's like we see a bunch of people we were friends with. It's like, yeah, it's hanging out. It's like you're basically just hanging out in this random small town in the Netherlands. It's like super nice and you see a million shows, million bands that like you never see doing doing crazy stuff. It's gotten progressively crazier too, where like, um, you know, so many bands that go, there's people that know each other. So people will jump in on each other's sets and do stuff. Yeah. And, uh, at some point there was a turn where I don't know how much we had to do with to do with it, but like where more bands were doing like secret sets, there'd be all these like pop up sets and stuff. It's awesome. It's it's awesome. The 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 only other fest I've ever had as much fun at is uh, when Adam Bartlett was doing Gilead Fest in, in uh, Wisconsin. He did, he did, they did the one with Dave in um, Olymp Olympia and Pittsburgh. All, all those, all the Gilead stuff. It was the same thing. It was like yeah. a bunch of bands played that like people we just were friends with. So it was just like hanging out for a weekend. You know, people we don't get to see that often. Because because so, didn't yeah, you? Super fun. Didn't you play four sets? Didn't you at Roadburn? Was it four sets or something? Three, three or four the sets? Last, the last two times. Yeah. Last, well, so they we were like the artists in residence um, at the one right before COVID. So you play you play all you play like three or four sets. I can't remember what it was. And then when they did the one coming out of COVID, and, and during during that artist and residency thing we did that misfits set that was like a secret set it was like so fun i i i i, I said sorry to interrupt you. i seen footage of that it was fucking incredible <laughs> yeah it's great it was it was stupid though because it like ruined this band because now like we played that set and it was so fun all of our other sets just like are crap by comparison <laughs> to like the amount of fun we had of that so that's like set the standard of like what our sets need to be. So so we played that secret set and and they really liked it. They were like, oh, this is fucking great, blah, blah, blah. And so when we came, when they did the one after COVID, they weren't gonna have they didn't ask us to play. I basically like hit them up and like talked our way onto that. And I was like, just bring us back. Don't even put us on the lineup. We're just gonna show up and play secret sets the whole week. We'll play four shows and we'll play secret sets the whole weekend. And, and I, you know, I basically had like this thing or that thing to like kind of, you know, get them to say yes. But uh, yeah, it's all it's awesome. It's awesome. The people that run it are great. Walt and Becky are awesome. All all the other all, like all the staff people that do it, super nice. It's, it's great. It's awesome. Killer. Yeah, that that curation. Highly recommend. What's that? What was the last bit? Highly recommended. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's on it's on my hit list, um, and I. I, I think that's what would, would have been good if you played Dark Mofo too. It's probably the only the only festival in Australia that really has that curation and stuff. It's really and it's it's about fucked up art, crazy artists. You know, I've seen I've, I've seen some artwork. There was some crazy guy painting with chalk, doing throat singing and stuff. You know, like just you you're walking into just madness which is which is great but it's it's really it's really focused in what they want to do it's not kind of um meant to be trendy or you know on the on trend on you know social media or anything it's it's the opposite of that so you know it, it's great. it, it looked awesome I, I hope they asked us to come back and do it because we, we would definitely do it if they did yeah they've had some had some good stuff the last time i went though i even seen uh kim gordon doing a noise set and that just fucking blew my mind that was just like yeah, yeah, great. You know, so yeah, I th I think Roadburn had um Jesus and Mary Chain play last year. So somebody like that. Somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, I think it was Jesus and Mary Chain. 
I can't remember. I get them confused. But Excellent. Yeah. One of those Jesus bands play for sure. Yeah. <laughs> can't remember. Oh, that's great. Um, I I think I've uh, asked you all the questions I need to ask. Thank thank you so much for your time and good to um yeah good to have a chat. You know, like that's it's. Yeah, because there's a lot of yeah, a lot of stuff kind of going on. The last question was it when when do you think the next record's coming? I don't know. We haven't really we haven't yeah. started talking. there's like a there's like a like a secret record that I me and uh the guy that the James Witten that records all our stuff have like sort of been oh, yeah. working on one like a like a studio record that was supposed to be a sort of like uh collaborative industrial ish type thing. Oh wow. Uh, I'm I'm trying to like polish that thing off and get the other thou dudes. I really Andy to like put a little of the, the spice on it to make it sound like us. But uh, maybe that if we can fi- if we can wow. start working on it. But um, yeah, no no point. I have no idea. We're gonna, I mean, we've t- we kind of started talking about it, but I think we're gonna like we're not gonna approach any of the new stuff the way we've sort of approached writing the records for the last 20 years. We're, we're just going to sort of like write as we go and just see what comes out and see where, I mean, I say that now, but like, there's no telling, like somebody that's, that's the thing with the records is like, if somebody stumbles on a song and it just like sets the tone for something, it just might send us down. Uh, but yeah, uh, right now, no plans to do anything. So yeah, on that I want to definitely ask about industrial, as in what kind of what, what are we talking? God flesh or? I, uh, I, I no, got to ask I, you the question. I got to ask the question now. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I was trying. You know, when me and when me and James started working on it, I was trying to take it in the other direction because, like, uh, the body who, who yeah. are like are, are you know our touchstone for stuff. Of course, they've yeah. already done several industrial records that are like harsh, heavy yeah, electronics. Yeah like that kind of stuff and and then uniform you know we're yeah, yeah. With, they already do a sort of like in, in in full hell even a sightless pit or all that stuff like like that already has its sort of like frenetic quality yeah, yeah. to it uh that's like i think the the thing that makes the most sense for like distorted guitar metal type bands to do so like i wanted to go in the other direction and do like um like a pretty hate machine, like a pop electronic sounding record. Wow. Like I, I basically I basically wanted to approach it where like like my vocals would just be like another layer of texture and be kind of buried a bit. And then we'd have uh another person as sort of like the main vocalist. Like our, our friend Kristen Kristen Hader that does uh Linda oh, yeah. like like she was like sort of one of the people I sort of had in mind to, to like take uh the range wow. of like the Vocal. but but also like i would want to pu- if i could uh convince her i would want to push her in a less ling- lingua like a less hyper melodramatic yes. uh, version of that and a more like melod- i want to push her in a different direction a little bit so i don't know we'll see i mean i, I already had you know the thing about that record is like i, I can't play anything this is part of why it's a studio record so like when we when me and James started working on it, it was like um, us pulling stuff from other Da recordings and then like re- fucking with the tracks and remixing it, based, doing these nice. like aggressive remixes that like do, do not sound like the original songs. And then we sort of like, I just started like getting people I knew to like give me stuff. Like I had Matthew from Da come in and just shit out lyric or um, shit out riffs for like twenty minutes, and then we just go through the thing and pull out some chunks and build certain songs off of that. And then, you know, I like Mike, Mike uh, Berdan from Uniform, I got him to give me some stuff and, you know, we sort of tweaked that stuff out. And uh, I got a couple of things from uh, Emma, Emma, Bruce Rundle's, um, her, uh, and yes, electronic. Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> so I got some of that headless print Zoltine stuff that we kind of worked on and, uh, so yeah, it's all in you know uh, the usual cat Emily McWilliams at the Silver Goblin and, and uh, right right now Melissa Guyon that does uh, NG Guiders got it in her hands she's trying to like finesse it into something and then uh, we'll see. Any anyway, that that recording we've already scraped uh, the 
Lonely Vigil off of Umbilical. Yeah, yeah. It's from that, like it's a song that I had built the demo on that. It's it's like not the version we do on Umbilical isn't that far off. It's like pretty much the same thing, but like the demo is like a little bit more electronic ish sound. Wow. Uh, a little noisier or whatever. And then that the end of um, House of Ideas, the like the like weird breakdown thing at the end. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's like uh, Michael Burdan from Uniform basically gave gave us an electronic thing, and me and James took it and like straightened it out into something. And then and I had Matthew come in and record that little riff over it. Yeah, yeah. So we just had that part, and there's uh there is a sort of like electronic ish version of it. But then when we were working on that song, I was like, oh, we should just steal that part and put it at the... I, I had just been listening to, like, Hoax or something. And Hoax has a song. I can't remember what song it is, but Hoax has a song that's where it's like, the end has that kind of... There's, like, an end yeah, of a song that's, yeah. like, got a real, like, just bonehead, mid-tempo, just, like, dumb rock rock. I was like, wow, this part is fucking sick. And I was like, oh, we just steal that part I have, stick it at the end of this song. And, the end, you know, we did some other stuff, but... Yeah, that, those were my those are my contributions. Some of those. Oh, uh, we you're, you're limited if you you're limited if you don't play an instrument. I have the same thing. I I I scream. I can write lyrics and I can be an ideas man. But I can't, I I, I the, my bandmates are it's in another language and they're talking about in the in the fifth and down tune. I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, I know uh, it sounds dude, good. They they hate me because whenever I, whenever I get criticism like oh that that part needs to be sadder that part needs to be a little bit more like you know like they they hate whenever i like try to try to explain something because I, I i don't know any, you know and emily puts me to shame because she's like classically trained and stuff and you know she knows the ins and outs and, like even those dudes who like andy and matthew have a little bit of guitar background from from like middle school and stuff like they know all kinds of stuff i'm just like i, I don't know i don't even know how to tune a guitar let alone play it. Yeah. And it's, um, and backtracking what you were saying about that other project stuff, sometimes that can be the most interesting stuff. Like um, a band, I mean, we put out a release, but we got all our mates to remix it. And it, and a lot of people like the remixes more like it's a, um, it's a, it's a kind of semi-industrial punk band, but one track is just like one vocal of me and the rest is just a fucking drone. And people, they love that shit. Another one was like had yeah. like breakbeat and jungle behind it. Like it's like you know just so so yeah. the landscape. You can do whatever you know. Like it's fucking great. Like yeah, and and we we have some like like uh Ben from uh from Uniform like the, they they know how to do all stuff. And Brandon from Plywood Rat. I was trying to get him to do some stuff because Plywood Rat did that one record that's like um it was just sort of like a toss up thing, but it like kind of blew up the the like electronic like pop thing they did um so like yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to get all those the idea of the record too is to be this sort of like massive collaboration where we're like pulling all our different all our different friends and trying to like ham everybody in there so but we'll 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 see if it happens or not i don't know i got a lot of stuff we got like 10 songs so wow that's it <laughs> yes yeah you, we'll you gotta make it happen now you've uh you know it's out there i'm trying <laughs> i'm doing my best yeah 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 um thank you so much for your time i'm 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 really looking forward to the to the shows um yeah because you're yes, playing sir. two in melbourne and then there's also uh an improv show not with you guys but when i spoke to dylan i think with your drummer we is is gonna may possibly be involved in that we might we might all jump in we've been talking about it oh wow we did. We did a. We did a that uh, House Primordial record. We did like yeah, came yeah. out of an improv session we had. So we we could maybe. I don't know. We got to talk about it. It's a. It's 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 a fun venue. Like they, the makeup club. It's just it's fucking wild stuff. Everything from fucking saxophones to you know death metal over keyboards and everything. It's um, I, I think that'll be a highlight. That'll be a a wild show. Like it's a small club and. The people that have curated that have done it for over twenty years, it's fucking great. So I think that'll be that's kind of in between. I think the two shows. So it'll be yeah. Yeah, I think I think we're pro hopefully going to try to do something. Yeah, that'll be good. If, if not, I might just jump in the full health set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what you said. You've got you 
Now, you, you after doing those uh, road burn sets, you can you can fucking do anything. You can just ju just jump in and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's what it's about. So, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, look at really looking forward to the shows. And um, yeah, thanks so much. And thank um, you, appreciate it, man. Take it easy. All right, thanks for your time. Yeah, I'll see you out there. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, take care, man. Thanks.